the mountain here uh, shifted downwards just a little bit because the flood eroded so much material away. Uh, here we are five months later, and this is still just an absolutely unrecognizable landscape. What's happening folks? Geologist Philip Prince in the field again, still looking at Helene landslides five months later. Uh, on this channel already, you have seen debris flow landslides that produced results like this, uh, including that enormous pile of trees. Going to look at a different type of landslide today. Uh, actually going to have to cross the Green River and go up and over that ridge to find it. Uh, I know of this feature's existence from LIDAR. I haven't been there in person. It's a very different type of slope movement from a debris flow, but it is a result uh, of Helene and actually some of the river flooding uh, that it produced here on the green. So hopefully the uh, the river crossing goes well. I think the, the path to the feature will be okay once we get across. Haven't been there in person, so we are going to find out what it looks like together. So stay tuned. All right, so step one, cross river. Actually, doesn't look like it's going to be too big of a deal. Thought I might be able to hop rocks. Looks like we're going to have to wade here, so uh, be back with you momentarily. All right, so I got high hopes for uh, high hopes for this part of the mission here. We'll uh, see how long we can stay dry. Oh, this used to be uh, quite a stable and shallow part of the river post-flood. Not sure what it's going to look like, but upstream of me here from the upper green, the flooding was not nearly so bad as what happened downstream uh, below where the big hungry river came in, which is what you see right there. Uh, and that severe downstream flooding is going to be a big part of the explanation of the slide we're going to. So I'm probably going to have to uh, have to concentrate a little bit on what's going on here because the water is still pretty cold. Catch up with you on the other side and we'll keep rolling. All right, made it. <laughs> water was cold. Didn't fall in. Heading up a little drainage now. Trying to get way up over the ridge in the distance, uh, but this little kind of holler that I picked here uh, had some sort of a little debris flow come down it. How do you know? Haven't gotten there yet. Well, there's a bunch of wood piled up behind every single tree. Uh, quite a bit of rock moved with it as well. Pretty typical for even the smallest debris flow events of the storm. Tumbling pieces of rock like that down the hill, hundreds of them, thousands of them, even a small landslide that fluidizes like a debris flow, do a huge amount of damage. So we'll uh, see where this thing comes from and then hopefully just hop over the ridge to our destination. All right, well, there it is. Uh, pretty flat along the top. Almost certainly old logging road embankment that just couldn't quite handle the rainfall. A lot of that going on during the storm. Got another one on the other side here. Those roads are decades old, just sitting there in the woods. Put enough water on them, uh, they can start debris flows and actually be pretty significant to making major changes in the landscape. Interesting side story that uh, came out of the storm event. If you look at these areas with LIDAR, absolutely covered these little debris flows and sometimes very big debris flows this started on old roads just like the one you see over there all right making making pretty good progress here uh not too bad of a slope really cool rock structures here gently tilted gently dipping pretty characteristic of this part of the world things sitting kind of precariously but uh interestingly during helene I am not aware of, of, of anything like that that uh, looks like you go up there and push it, having, having actually moved further. Uh, in fact, a lot of really precarious looking ground was already identified from LIDAR. Didn't really do anything during the storm, which sort of adds to the, the mystery of an event like that in terms of how might you predict where problems will happen. And that's always a very tough thing to do. Looks like we got the uh, top of the ridge up here hit. Should just drop over the back. Be pretty close to the destination. All right, doing, doing pretty well here. 
free flow across the river. You actually see some of the white rocks cleanly scoured down there in the Green River Gorge. The free flow down in front of me here. The objective is actually down there in the uh, in the slightly less steep part of the slope. Uh, it's really cool to see all this in person right now, having having briefly looked at it with lidar. Uh, got a lidar flight done just over this area pretty shortly after the storm, and you see features like the one I'm walking through right now, but they always look smaller when you see them on a map. When you see them in person, they're always serious, uh, even ones like this that don't cover quite the same amount of an area as some of the other videos on this page. So we'll keep crashing down the slope here, and I think we're going to uh, be at our destination here momentarily. All right, so made it. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very dramatic. It's just that little bit of bare soil right there. You can follow it out that direction. Turn around this way. See it there? There's about a, you know, about a three foot step down. And that line of soil runs for a few hundred feet, uh, sort of parallel the contour of the slope. Why is it cool? It's actually the top of a really, really big landslide. It would be 20, 30 feet thick, maybe more. It shifted just a little bit, just enough to drop the land down here, three or four feet in some places. But it did that all the way down to the river uh, there in the distance. Why did the land move like this? Got to go down to the river to see that and uh, actually got to try to uh, try to sketch it out here in the field. It's a very classic geologic relationship. And while it doesn't look like much, here in the forest, if something like that happened in a developed area that would break utility lines, condemn houses, whatever you like. So, so even, a, even a small movement like this, and one that doesn't happen rapidly and catastrophically like a debris flow, uh, it still can have really big impacts in this part of the country. Looking up here, might be able to get a better sense of the step right there. So. If you had been here during Helene, you might have been able to, to perceive that happening over a few minutes. Uh, it might have happened in just a minute or so. It might have been much slower. It might have been, been you know, an hours long process. We don't know. The, the nature of the slope here is not appropriate to produce a big catastrophic failure that's going to go down and dam the whole river up or something like that. But the movement here is really significant. Uh, and again, when we go down here and look at why this place moved to begin with, uh, it takes on a little more meaning. Okay, so down here on the Green River. I've spent a lot of time down here before the flood. Uh, it is completely unrecognizable. It's very interesting to look at. Uh, a lot of those rocks were there before the flood and, and didn't move much. Others that are pretty good size, car size, truck size, actually move quite a bit. Uh, we're downstream before the Big Hungry River comes in. Did a video about that one. Uh, and the flood damage that you see here uh, is largely from the water that came out of Big Hungry uh, that fell on the ground uh, up in places around, around Dana, uh, up higher up in the Big Hungry River. But why are we down here at the river? Uh, first of all, it's absolutely incredible to look at. But it's all about this big eroded cliff. This is the toe where the downslope end of the landslide that caused that crack that we were looking at upslope. So uh, the flood came along here, scoured a huge amount of material away, and that actually removed enough resistance that a side of the mountain, 500 feet long up the slope, about 500 feet wide, so that's a little over 150 meters, probably, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 feet thick, 15 meters thick, maybe 20 meters thick, who knows? It all shifted down uh, about about three feet or so. Is it still moving? Is it going to move more? I don't know. It's entirely it's entirely possible when when the bottom end, the toe of a landslide, is disturbed like this, it tends to produce pretty dramatic effects. And you can see smaller failure off the toe of the slope, just sort of what we call raveling, just pieces of rock falling down. What we're talking about is much bigger. The uh, the bottom of the sliding area would be almost down there at river level. May walk down there and see if you can see evidence of it. There's not a lot of movement, but man, the the volume 
the amount of, of rock, soil, trees, whatever, quite literally the whole side of the mountain here uh, shifted downwards just a little bit because the flood eroded so much material away. Uh, here we are five months later, and this is still just an absolutely unrecognizable landscape. Uh, who knows if this will, uh, <laughs> I guess I would use the words ever, look like, uh, look like it did before. It's an interesting question. All right, so uh, we got the uh, the Microsoft Paint screen here, sitting by the river. Very nice surroundings, I must admit. It's better than a Microsoft app on a computer. Get the pen opened up here, ready to roll. My light keeps shifting. Get new shadows here every couple minutes. So what's uh what's up in this area? So let's see. We'll uh, draw in hillside coming down put it like that we'll come across the other side here other side of the river and then we'll have the river down cut into the land kind of like that and a scenario sort of like that pretty simple we'll, we'll we'll keep it easy here out in the wilds so during the flood have water come up that high and with water flowing that high huge volume of water coming through here uh, you're going to end up eroding a lot of the base of the slope right there. So clear all that away and then we'll drop the water level back down to what it would normally be. Actually have it scoured out a little bit deeper there after the flood. And now you got this big steep cut bank, kind of like a bluff here uh, along the side of the river, no problem. That's what that thing is up to my left. And when all this material has been removed here, that destabilizes the slope and allows it to push outward here at the bottom just a little bit. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a subtle effect, but we'll let it push out there into the river just a touch. And when the bottom moves outward, the top has to pull away and move down slope as well. And when it does that, it's gonna drop down a little bit. And that's gonna make that downward stepping crack that we looked at uh, up the hill, right? So very, very simple model here. Uh, you don't have to go any deeper into it than saying that if you cut the toe, the base, off of a steep slope like happened right there, it's going to destabilize a big block of the slope. It's gonna move and as the toe pushes out, the top of it is gonna move outward, but you're gonna see downward movement uh, as well, because ultimately down the road, if this thing moves further, it's gonna start to drop down and, and sort of lower what we call a grobbin, like a block down into, uh, down into the side of the slope, right? In this particular case, the bedrock layering tilts kind of like this. Uh, if you look across the river there, it's tilting down into the slope. This landslide is absolutely moving bedrock. So you may be looking uh, at a situation where the tilt of the bedrock is actually helping this movement occur just a little bit. That wouldn't be at all uncommon uh, in this part of the Appalachian. So there we go. In the, in the field, Microsoft Paint. I feel like I should uh, tidy up these lines a little bit. Kind of holding the camera here trying to draw and hold the dry erase board with your knees is a brand new experience for this channel. It's kind of cool, might have to, uh, might have to try it again. All right, so before we get out of here, take a look at some of the material that's actually moving here. Uh, again, it's, it's definitely bedrock. It's not what we call colluvium or a soil that consists of boulders and rocks that have fallen off the top of the mountain and kind of piled up in the hollow. This is, this is, is intact, intact bedrock here. I have an idea that it may be tilting a bit flatter than usual because it's it's sort of pushing out here at the bottom of the slide. Don't know that for sure, but just seeing what the slide is made of uh, to a geologist is pretty interesting. We're always looking at what type of material tends to slide in this part of the Appalachians, how aspects like how the rock is tilted, things like that control that sliding. In this case, Hard rain and a huge, huge, huge amount of erosion here on the river was the problem. 
but there are instances where construction development making a big road cut or something like that if it cuts tilted layering kind of like this it can actually induce a big uh, a big slide like this as well looks like somebody's quad made it all the way down here who knows how far that washed in from probably up on olita somewhere or something like that uh so it looks like i can actually hop rocks across the river down here get to the other side and get back to my car that way if i kind of scamper along the rocks uh, i have to admit that is preferable to what i did on my way out here because the river is really 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 cold like crazy cold i guess it's just what the first of march right now but man i would have expected a little bit more of a warm-up by this point i don't remember being able to hop rocks across the river at this rapid in the past when you paddle the green water's higher than this but i don't know that seems like a seems like a new thing but i'm absolutely grateful for the opportunity to uh get out of here without having to wade. I about did some wading just then, but we made it. Almost there. Whew. All right, that all went well. I had to put the phone down here and concentrate a bit. See you shortly. All right, we'll try not to do anything stupid here. Probably should have uh, <laughs> just walked back out through the woods. I don't know. All right, made it. No, no swimming, no waiting, thankfully. Uh, still got a ways to go here. Have to scramble over plenty more rocks. Amazing to think that where I'm climbing right now is being scoured by water during the height of the flood. Um, Almost hard, hard to imagine. I don't know. Will we, will we ever see another one like this? Uh, I hope not, honestly. There's always a chance. Got a Gulf of Mexico. Good place to cook up a hurricane. Uh, good place to pull a bunch of rainfall before the hurricane. So it's always possible. But looking up the river here where we're going, uh, from someone who, again, has spent a lot of time down in here, I don't know. It's, it's completely unrecognizable. Somehow, this guy didn't ride the whole flood. It's coming with me for sure. All right, so round trip almost completed here. Dry feet, no wading with shoes on or swimming, always nice. Passing by, find a little landslide here. I'm actually gonna see if I can use these trees, kind of bridge bridge the gap out of here. Quite, a, quite an interesting trek in here today. I guess the point of it was to show that a, a flood can shape the landscape in other ways than just carving out, carving out a riverbed. Uh, undercutting of the slopes like you saw actually end up destabilizing huge areas and quite literally moving the, uh, moving the side of the mountain many hundreds of feet away from the actual slide. And I have an idea that as time passes, we're gonna see a few more features like that pop up. There might be some that will end up affecting uh, roads, for example, and we just haven't really noticed them yet because they're a little bit less obvious than a debris flow. Ooh, almost there, all right. So, hope this was a, an interesting video uh the the flood here on the green particularly of course where the big hungry came out up here this is as big as it got anywhere with helene and well downstream of us in green river cove uh it was quite destructive uh and deadly and floods like this you know we hadn't hadn't seen one since 1916 in this area really and based on what the river looks like now my guess is that 1916 was not nearly this bad here uh what's the future going to bring we don't know, uh, only time will tell. But right now, I'm gonna get it back to the car, 
Hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you check out the next one.